Well, I'm definitely into winter mode. Um, during the summer, we put over 8,400 miles on our camper and made videos of that along with a few other things. But now winter mode is in the shop, making stuff and sometimes fishing lures. And uh, this will be my third one in a row in the last couple of weeks. This one is gonna be a little bit different. So uh, I'm gonna bear with me because I probably will backtrack a couple of times, redo a couple of things, um, because this may not work out as good as I wanted it to. So let me show you what I have in mind. So, what I'm looking for is to make a head, something like this, and then hollow out the inside, and I have other plans too for weighting it and putting it an eye loop in sort of a, a through wire, and then getting some kind of, of feathered, body on this <clears throat> with hooks here and one that is sort of hidden in the tail end. Never done this before, but I'm willing to give it a try. It'll be fits and starts, I think, but um, let's give it a shot. Now it's kind of unusual to put a lip on a bait like this. Um, and I've got to get it towards the front, not too big, because I want some wobble to it. And uh, lips can be tricky, um, but you kind of got to understand them. <clears throat> a lip that hangs down and is wide will put more of a wobble on a bait. On a bait. And if it's narrow, it'll be a smaller, tighter wobble. And the reason for this has to do with eddies. Let me show you. So I'm gonna to wanna to put a lip on this lure. And let's say this is the lip, and you're looking down on top of the fish, and the fish is moving, or the lure rather, is moving in this direction. Well, water comes and it flows around the lip, creating eddies on the back side of it. Those eddies tend to create a suction that pulls the lip in one direction or the other. And eventually, the lip is going, one side's gonna win out, and it's gonna tip to one side. When that happens, the water is gonna flow kind of off on one side. It will curl around. And when that happens, the water here will still be curling around this side, and this side will win out, the suction will draw it backwards. So eventually you'll end up with the lure be being turned in this direction. And again, the water will kind of flow off the side while the eddy is still building up here. And then this side will pull it down. So it's a suction of the eddies on the back side of the lure that actually draw it to that side. Now, if you have a fish, or a lure, I keep calling it a fish, with a small bill on the bottom, it's going to do this, but it's going to do it quickly, and it's gonna flitter. But if you should have a wider bill, and I'm gonna exaggerate this along the bottom, there's a much more leverage on both sides of these. So it's gonna pull harder, but slower, so instead of getting a flitter, you're going to get a wobble. Now this is exaggerated. You actually don't need to do that much. You can have one that's just under the side 
a velour like this, or you can have one that actually comes out like this and that can make all the difference. I am gonna make a very small one just to get a little movement inside this bait. I'm gonna find a good piece of wood. Now I've got a ton of hardwood around here. Um, I wish I had a piece of pine. You can't turn around in Maine without walking into a white pine tree. But for the most part, we consider it to be like junk wood, too knotty to really build furniture with and uh, too soft to burn. So um, some people like it to, uh, to, to build furniture with, but it, it's not the first choice for many of us. But it does carve good um, for making something small like a fishing lure, but I don't have any. So let's take a look and see what I've got in my wood box. Okay, walnut, lots of maple, some oak, a little bit of mahogany, um, no pine, it's a little bit of poplar, which would be okay. Um, what's that? Cedar. I've got some cedar, not my first choice, but I built a lot of lures out of this because it's a fairly light wood. Um, it carves really good. It's got a little bit too much of a pronounced grain for me for carving, but it doesn't seem to impede it that well, that much. Um, it actually works pretty good. And this one is an inch thick, which uh, is a plus for this, for this uh, bait that I'm making. Um, for those of you who are thinking of making baits, particularly if you've never made one, um, good way to get started, you buy the shortest cedar deck board that you can find for, well, they're more than a few dollars now, but they're still not that expensive considering. And um, you know, if you buy an eight footer, which may be the smallest one you can get, you can make a lot of fishing lures out of it. And the added advantage is that deck boards are one inch thick. They're not plain down to three quarters of an inch thick. So you get something a little thicker to start working with. And it's a decent wood to work with, even though there are many others um, for bait making that are considered uh, superior. Well, I do this off camera because for myself, I didn't even know what I wanted yet. So there it is. And it's, of course, it's just the head, and it's got a little bit of a collar around it, um, so it gives me some place to uh, insert the feathers that will go in back of it. It's also a little bit bigger than I'm used to making because I have to carve this small head, and I just wanted a little something to be able to grab onto in order to do that to make it a little bit easier. So it'll be a little bit larger. It'll be like a more like a six inch as opposed to the four inch that I make. Um, so I need to get this on the uh, seat and we'll get started. cut it out and um, I've left a, a section on the back as a handle so I can put it in the vise and maybe work on it a little bit better with the Dremel. I know it's kind of funny looking but we'll look beyond that. Um, and uh, I think I need to draw this on now and uh, start figuring out how I'm going to shape it and, uh, and carve it. Well, there it is, the roughed out section. And now, some sanding, which don't take long because this wood sands really good, just to kind of round off some of the little sharper edges and uh, then I'll get to carving. And 
really doesn't take any more than that initially. The symmetry is pretty good. Now I've got to carve this thing. Well, the drawing's on rather freehand, which is the way I do it. Don't really know if this looks like a fish because I don't look at anything while I'm doing it, but I've seen fish. So it looks like the fish that I'm making. out the inside of this thing so the feathers can go in. I've got this fairly coarse bit to do that with. I'm hoping it works. Let's find out. Dremel bit. It's uh, Kudzal. They make a bunch of stuff for uh, grinders too for really sloughing off a lot of wood. This one looks like this and uh, if you want to take out some serious wood this is the thing to do it. So we have this. I have this sort of hollowed out now. I have it carved down pretty good. It's a little more sanding. I had the lip break, so I had to put a little super glue and some activator on it to uh, put it on, put it back on because I, I pushed down on it too hard by mistake. A um, little more sanding, some fine sanding, and uh, I think we'll be, be ready to paint this. <clears throat> I've drilled a, a hole for the eye loop and it goes right through to the other side because this will be a through wire lure going to the back. I've made a small pocket on the bottom side of this for lead. I want this weighted on the bottom, waiting for the lead pot to heat up. seal this very fairly quickly so I'm going to uh, use some super glue CA glue as it's properly called and um, seal it inside and out thought I'd show you what I've come up with a color scheme for the feathers and this is just one side it would be duplicated on the other side um, I've got various quail and, and peacock feathers here whatever they are and the head would be right about like that um, got this beautiful shimmering green white this little blue and greenish and then this little accent color right here um, 
the head has some white spots on it, but that's just when I use the activator on the um, on the super glue that it did that. But when it's painted up, it won't show. I'm thinking that's not bad. I would have liked a little red in there, and I've got some, but I don't know if it's too much. And this is kind of kind of curly too, so I think those those more subtle colors might be better. And I wanted to, also I was wondering about putting a little black in here and I've still got to decide on that. I don't know exactly where it would go. It shouldn't go on the bottom, it should go near the top, but I don't want to hide these things. So I think it's going to be pretty much what I'm like to do is uh, cover this entirely with black paint. some transparent blue in here right now. very light dusting along the top and a little bit down the sides of some fluorescent green. And the reason I'm using fluorescent colors is uh, because they they look good over over silver which I have some on here and um, they don't hide the color underneath a lot. together. Um, I've got a small plastic plate that fits inside the back of the head and I'm going to be gluing feathers and layers on one side and then duplicating it on the other. Um, never done this before but I think this is the way that I would do it if I were going to. So.
as usual, no matter when you're making a lure, one side always looks better than the other. Now this goes off to the UV chamber to dry, but it's just the first coat. Um, it's not the finished coat. Um, I'm going to want to um, do a little bit more to this floor over this UV resin. the through wire and I put it through the end and it comes out I don't know if you can see that in there in the back and it splits both up and down and how I made this was I just made a loop here put three twists in and that is what's going right through the nose and the goal is to take and put a hook down at the bottom right here and also one at the end of the tail and I'd like to wrap the wire around the hook so that the hook doesn't dangle on the wire but stays out straight. That's the goal anyway. Another hook that I'm going to be using is this larger long shank one. Um, I think that would be best in the back end and um, and I've got one of them and I've never had a place to use them too much because on crankbait you usually use something with a shorter shank so this would be a good place for it I think. on both of those wires where the hooks are and it's in the curing chamber now and I'm going to be mix mixing up some five minute epoxy I've got two tubes here in a small cup and I'm going to be partially filling the inside of the head and then putting the feathers in and uh, letting them dry that
epoxy is dry, we have a hook right down here. I don't know if you can see, there's one right in there also, in the tail. And they're both on through wires, and the wires are stiff, so they're not going to dangle down at all. So the next thing to do is to uh, take a couple of um, shots for the uh, cover page and then to go down and try it out. It is cold out here. Well, as far as tracking is concerned, it stays upright. I don't know if you can see it in there or not. And it doesn't fall over, but the, the uh, bill I put on it didn't give it any movement at all, which is very unusual with lore. But I'm assuming that the feathers are keeping it from having any movement. It does float, barely. Doesn't sink at all. I'm not going to be staying out here very long. It uh, actually looks really good in the water. What it reminds me of is my brother-in-law years ago was a fly tire. And he used to tie mostly streamers. And in the water, this looks like a streamer. It tracks very smoothly, very straight, very upright. Um, with hardly any movement at all, like a, uh, a streamer fly would be. And uh, it kind of looks a little bit like a gray ghost because that was my favorite fly that I used to like to troll with. And this will be a trolling lure should I use it um, because it seems to go better the faster you pull it. And I troll at a fairly good clip. Um, so uh, this should, should work. I'm, I'm anxious to try it out. I have no idea if it's going to catch any fish. Um, when I build something like this, it's uh, kind of off the wall. I, I have my doubts, but I'll throw it in the water this spring and uh, see how it goes. But right now, I'm freezing. By the way, this is my lake. Well, it's not my lake. I just call it that. Mousum. Half mile wide, six miles long. And um, if you would like the video, uh, it'll bring it to the surface as someone is searching for fishing lures or, or streamers or lure making and uh, subscribe. It helps. Thanks.